Hello, welcome to What is Stratos? An explanation of SDL Stratos Studio. We'll start by talking about the general way in which the program works. We start with a source file, which is then converted into an SDLX lift, that's the Stratos file format. And then finally, after all the translation is completed, we convert it into a target file. So for example, if you start with a Word file, the Word file is converted into an SDLX lift, and this is what that looks like. This is the actual program. And then when you're done with the translation, you um, save as target, create the target file, or export the translation into the original format, so you end up with a translated Word file. This is an example of some of the file types that you can open with um, SDL Trado Studio. The list, the actual list is much longer. So the idea is source file, then SDLX lift where the translator does the work, and then target file. The translation resources that are used by SDL Trado Studio are translation memories and term bases. Um, a translation memory is a file where every segment that is translated and confirmed by the translator is stored. Each of these that you see here, these um, six segments, have been stored in the translation memory. So each of these, with the English and the Spanish, is a, transla a translation unit. And um, as you work and confirm each of them, they are stored in the translation memory. The translation memory can contain millions of segments, and it grows with every confirmed segment. Another translation resource that we use is a term base. Term bases are databases that contain terms that are entered or imported by the translator. This can be done manually. These are basically glossaries or word lists um, that we can use. Terms can be added during the translation process, but are not added automatically. This is what the term base looks like. So you can see here that you have, for example, the word distance, and you have distance and then the translation, which is distancia. But um, you see the difference between the translation memory, which is segment um, translation units, where each individual segment has been committed to the memory, and the term base, which is basically like a dictionary or a glossary. So this is what the program looks like. And this is where we have our segments that we need to translate. This is where we see the translation memory results. And this is where we see the term base. Let's look at the program in action. So here we are looking at SDL Trado Studio 2019. And uh, for this project here, I have um, several files. I have several Word files and one PowerPoint file that the client has provided. And an advantage of um, SDL Trado Studio is that you can open all the files at once and you can work on all the files at once if you want to do that. This is a nice view. It shows you the total word count, and it also shows you if you have any repetitions or any matches um, with the memory. The memory, the translation memory I'm using for this demonstration is virtually empty, so there aren't a lot of matches. But let's see how it works. We go to the editor here, and as we saw before, if we have any matches for, from the translation memory, they will be shown here. Any matches from the term base will be shown here. So right away we see that um, there are a couple of words here in the first segment that are showing a red line on top, and that means that they have been uh, recognized from the terms in the term base. I'm going to activate the term base viewer here. These are the terms that have been recognized within the active segment, and the term base viewer will show all the terms in the term base. So uh, I start by going into my first segment, and I'm going to um, start translating. Let's start with this one. Let's say that that's the first file. And as we go into the first segment, we see that this is already an existing translation unit in the memory. And because it's a perfect um, a context match, that means it's a 100% match, the source text to what is stored in the translation memory, it's populated here. So I'll confirm that. I don't need to do anything else. And we can see how immediately other segments that are identical, like this one here, uh, will be populated and confirmed as well. This one is similar. It's not identical. And we can see the difference here. There is a period there um, in, the, in the translation unit that is stored in the memory, but my new segment does not have that final period. And so that means that the new the translation 
will need to um, not have that. So I take that from here, and you see that the, um, the period has been automatically deleted. That's a function, a feature in Studio that's called Fuzzy Match Repair. That's why we see the little wrench there. And then after I do that, I just confirm the segment, and that's it. So let's go back up, and we go here, and we're just going to enter the translations here. As I'm typing, you can see that I start getting suggestions. These suggestions come from a feature that is called auto-suggest, and it helps us type faster as we don't need to type everything. Again, I confirm the segment. I translate it, and I confirm it, and immediately it goes and looks in the rest of the segments, and in this case, it finds that this segment is the same, so it will populate it immediately and confirm it as well. confirm that segment. And again, that segment is repeated further down, so it is propagated. That's called autopropagation. Each of these, um, these um, orange markers indicate the end of a file and the beginning of a new file. So remember that we have several files in this project. And so these files are very short only for the demonstration. So we are um, moving into a different file. Many of these repetitions that we're seeing are in different files. Now look at this, um, this segment here. What we're seeing here is what we call a fuzzy match. It means that it's a match, but it's not a perfect match. It's not a 100% match. There are some differences between the segment that is stored in the, in the translation memory, the translation unit that is um, stored in the translation memory, and the segment that I need to work on. And the differences are indicated for me here in green. That means that that new text has been added to the segment. So that means that immediate, the word immediate, um, is new in this segment. And there's also a final period that I didn't have in the information that is stored in the translation memory. So I'll, all I need to do is go into my segment here. I have the fuzzy match automatically inserted here. And then I just add what I'm missing. So just that and store that. When I confirm the segment, it is if I go back into the segment, you'll see that it has now been stored with the right translation into the memory. This is another segment with a similar situation where the word sum has been deleted and the word important has been added compared to what I had stored in the memory. So I go here and I need to make some changes. Notice how if I start typing important, importante, as soon as I start typing, I see that. And so that's because that word is stored in the term base that I'm using. And so it is offered to me. It is being recognized here, and it's offered to me. I just type the first, I could just type the first letter, and then hit enter, and the entire word will be enter there. So we do that, and confirm the segment. Another segment that is also a fuzzy match, this text that is shown uh, highlighted in green was not in the original translation unit that was stored in the memory. So that needs to be added for this translation to be correct. Um, let's use this example to see how we can um, add some terms to the term base. It's very simple. All you have to do is select the terms that you want to add. Right click, and we have Quick Add New Term. You could also use the, the shortcut. And now this has been stored in the term base, and it's ready to be used. If I start typing the word, I have it ready to be um, inserted by just hitting Enter. I confirm that. And so um, actually, if we look at this, we see that all of these um, up here are the Word files. And the last one here is the PowerPoint file. You can see that because this is the file type identifier. These are our wor all Word files. Let's finish this translation up here. Let's use that. And so that came from the translation memory itself. Um, SDL Trado Studio starts recognizing the information that has been stored in the translation memory and starts offering fragments 
for the future translation segments that come up. So we go into the next segment and we see, again, that's a turn-based hit right there. Just hit enter. And we have that as well in the turn base. Confirm that. And um, now, as I confirm the segment, it takes me immediately to the next unconfirmed segment. And so I'm here now in the PowerPoint file, and I can see that here. And I can also see that here. And notice how um, the words, again, are being suggested from the turn base. And here I have, um, the reason I'm seeing this is because I have a setting set up that is um, auto-suggest 99%, but I'm going to get rid of that for now for this demonstration, and we're going to go into that and see that as we go back into the segment, we get the hit from the translation memory with the repair, what we call the fuzzy match repair, which is an automatic repair. It provides the translation, and because it identifies that it has an extra period that is not needed, um, Trado Studio is able to delete that and offer me the repaired match, which is actually perfect in this case. I don't need to do anything. I can just confirm it. And then I have the next segment that is also a fuzzy match, also with a repair done by the program itself. I don't need to make any corrections. I just confirm that. And that's it. And so this is how we translate in SDL Trado Studio. Once we are done with this, um, after we have done all of our checks and verifications, because we have the ability to determine uh, custom verifications, do spell checks and all that, and we are ready to produce the target, we save this as a target and we will end up with the translated versions of all of these documents. And so we see how we can take advantage of the various features of the program to make our work more productive and at the same time, we can store information in our translation memory and in our term base to be used um, in the future. Because if I get a different file tomorrow, I could use this translation memory. And those, that information, those segments will be there to help me um, with what I'm doing. I hope you find this helpful. Um, this is a very basic introduction. There is a lot more information available. Um, online that you can easily find about SDL Trader Studio.